Hi, this is Donna from Clever Crafting. Thank you so much for joining me again today. So today we are making this little card that's got that lovely spinning or tumbling element in it. I've got a couple of examples to show you up front. So this one is the same as my template. The black and white one was just my template. And you can see here that I've got this panda traveling through some bamboo and he um, is this one is actually going behind the bamboo in the first one that I showed you he hides behind the bamboo. But in the card that we're actually making today, you can see that what he's doing is standing at the top and then falling off. So it's such a cute little card to make. And of course, you can do it with all sorts of different elements. Once we understand the principles of how to make this card, which by the end of today's video, you should, um, then you'll be able to do any sort of design. So I'm going to start off by just positioning out the elements and where I want them on my card front. So this piece is 14.3 centimeters by 10 centimeters will go on my card front. And I'm just trying to position the pandas. Now, this is one of the label dies out of the labels green out of the various greetings label set, but you can actually cut this a strip a, a hole with a blade and a ruler. So I'm just positioning where I want it. If I was cutting this out manually, I would draw the lines and they're about a centimeter apart. But what I've done is I was able to put my die there and I've just put it through my die machine, die cutting machine. So what I want to do is do a bit of partial die cutting here because I want a little ledge for my panda to sit on at the top and I want it the same width. So all I'm doing is positioning my die and I'm going to tape it down there and I'm going to do some partial die cutting. So now you get to see my really old cuddle bug that works like a charm. And what I'm doing is the top plate, I'm only putting the top plate over the area that I want to cut. I can't put it over the whole lot because then it would cut the whole lot. So once again, I just showed you there where I've just put it over a part of the, the area that I want cut and look at that, worked like a charm, lovely. All right, so now what I've done is um, you'll find in the list down below that you need two pieces of card and I've just popped the other lightweight piece of card behind my original one and I'm just going to stencil it. Now this today isn't about stenciling. I am showing you how I did my stenciling. This is very, very fast. I don't actually move this fast. Uh, just in case you thought that I, you know, was this quick. But um, all I'm doing is stenciling on some bamboo. I'm using a couple of shades of the green. And you can see I put the blue all over the background because it's nice. You would see some of the sky or whatever through bamboo or some more bamboo. I'm now just moving my stencil up a little bit to continue the bamboo all the way to the top because it wasn't quite tall enough. All right, now that that's all done, we're going to need a couple of washers. Now, these are just standard washers. Um, the sizes are in the, in the uh, supplies list that you'll be able to get from below. And I have just um, grabbed, punched out a couple of little circles to cover the holes in the washers. Now, these washers, I think, are about 1.8 centimeters, about three quarters of an inch wide. Now, I'm flipping them over here and I'm just using some foam dots. These are quite tricky to get out, aren't they? So um, I'm just pulling out the dots and I'm just putting one in the hole on the other side of the washer. And what this is going to do, I'm doing that on both of them. And I haven't taken the release paper off here, but I just want to show you that this will give you a fine gap between them. So if you're using other means or if you're punching your own um, dots, that's what you need, a small gap between them. It's important now that we line them up. So I've put a piece in the back you can see it from the back there and the um, double-sided foam dot is coming through. It's kind of centralized. We don't have to worry too much about how we line this up as long as we, you know, like getting the two dots together because as long as we line up both sides of that washer, the top wash with the bottom washer, it'll automatically be in the center. So press that down and make sure you can see that that moves. Let me pick that up and and you can see that that is moving through our hole. And of course, the washers can't fall through the hole because the washers are wider than the hole. So that hole, that channel is about one centimeter wide, whereas my washer is 1.8 centimeters. So it works really well. What I'm doing now is I'm just um, temporarily adhering my washers on the right side so they don't move while I attach double-sided foam tape on the back side. Now, you know that I do like using reusing cardboard, but in this particular case, I have found that the double-sided foam tape is best because it's got smooth edges and it's the edges that we use kind of like a rail for our tumbling mechanism. So I have just cut a piece double-sided foam tape 
the length that I want it and I am putting it in position running it parallel to the channel that I've cut. Now you've got to just make sure that there is a small gap between the double sided foam tape and our washer and then we're going to do the same on the other end. It's just a matter of um, measuring it, cutting it and I've already taken the sticky back off this one and I'm popping it down. Now this double sided foam tape that I am using is from Bunnings. It's only one mil thick so I've doubled it over and you can see that I have covered the back of my card with it. And what we're going to do is stick it on that other piece that uh, the other plain white piece that we had behind that we did the stenciling over. So I won't make you watch me pull all the release paper off. I've done that now and I'm standing up because I find it so much better and easier to line up if I'm standing up and getting a bird's eye view over the top of my card. I find that that's quite important. It's all lined up. All I had to do was line it up with the stenciling on the inside, you know, like in the channel. And I can take the uh, holding tape off the top of my card and you can see now that this moves around beautifully in my in my channel area. The reason that I stencil over that hole as you can see is because that hole then becomes almost invisible. You get that beautiful continuity of your design. So I'm just making sure that all of my little pandas are going in the right spot. I'm happy with that. All we need to do is pop a little bit of glue which is really handy for that little white piece of paper, the cardstock that we stuck on earlier because you can just use that um, as a little glue spot. And I'm going to pop my panda on my um, tumbling mechanism. I don't know what else to call it. I'm guessing a tumbling mechanism is as good as anything else. The other two pandas I'm just going to glue straight onto the card front. I've done that now so now I can pick up my whole piece and I'm going to stick it on a black card base. It, I think the black really makes the whole card pop. So I'm just popping a little bit of glue on the back. Of course with glue you get um, the wiggle room which is great so you can make sure that it's nice and straight. And then the best part is you get to now play with our little pad. Look at him, he falls. Of course you'd want to put a greeting on it but uh, I haven't put greetings on mine. I've kind of stopped doing that for the moment unless I've got a specific purpose because then I can add greetings at any time um, when a birthday or something comes up. It's so cute. Just one more time. Let's go. Ooh. Okay. So I really hope you uh, have learned something and it really take the time to make this card and that you enjoy doing it. This is not only good for kids because I've got to tell you, boys love these types of cards. They just can't help themselves. They've got to play with them for ages. Um, it would really help my channel if you uh, hit the thumbs up button and even subscribed to it. Um, all of those little bits and pieces, of course, help us immensely. Um, if you've learned something today, maybe you'd like to share it with some friends as well. Anyway, until next time, stay safe and happy, happy crafting.